In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to invoice our clients, grant them access to a product, whatever it might be. And then we're also going to take that product and associate it in SureDash with a space where our customers can get direct support from us in a private setting just for them inside of SureDash along with a place where they can access their invoices that we're going to be sending them. It's a pretty cool tutorial, really good for anyone that's going to be invoicing a client and then giving them access to content on their website, particularly in SureDash. So let's jump in and walk you step by step on how to build it. We're going to get started by coming into SureCart. We need to add a product that we're going to be invoicing our customers for. In this particular tutorial, we're going to have a specific product with a specific price. I'll do another tutorial in the future about how to do like a name your own price type invoice. We'll give our product a name and then we'll click create. You can add in a description and images if you wish. I'll go ahead and leave mine blank just for this, but I'll add a price and I'm going to set this price as something like $499. I'm going to make it a recurring invoice. So it'll be a subscription that they're going to be signing up for. And then I'll go ahead and say that repeats. We'll do every year and then we'll just call this uh, client tech membership, something like that. And then we're going to go ahead and we'll exclude it from our upgrade options should we have any on our website. I have other videos on how to do that. And I know a lot of people charge like an initial setup fee, so why don't we go ahead and include that as well. We'll call it our setup fee and we'll say it's something like $1,500. So yeah, a good example of this might be you build a website and then you offer a support package, something like that. And we'll click create price. If you have any downloads that you want to include with your purchase, you can add them here to make them secure. They'll be accessed inside of your client's account page in the SureCart dashboard. We don't need to worry about any of that for our example here. We're just basically selling a monthly subscription to be able to get the support and whatever else you offer along with that initial setup fee. So we're going to go ahead and save and publish our product. Now, before we go and we go into Sure Members and set up all of our access groups, which we're going to do next, Let's take a look at what we're going to be protecting. And this is just my SureDash installation where I do all of my video demos like the one that you're watching. But I created this little section here. It's uh, just a support portal. I created it as a space group by clicking add space group. And then I created a widget support section. I'll go ahead and delete this and then I'll make a new one to show you how I did that from scratch. So we'll click the little plus symbol next to the support portal. We'll go ahead and choose discussion. We can call this member support or whatever you want to call your section, however it relates to your product. Yes, it'll be in the support portal section of our SureDash. We can choose a topic form. If you haven't created a topic form yet, I do have a video on my introduction to SureDash. And again, this is all the alpha version. So if any of this changes in a big way, I'll be sure to record an update. Uh, but essentially, um, this was one of my big gripes and still is. Like if you don't have a topic form, you have to like go back and make one. But I went ahead and made a topic form and I called it tech help. Um, so we'll just select that. If you haven't made a topic forum yet, just go back to your uh, SureDash and go to topic forums and just create one. We're gonna toggle this option to make discussions private. This means that any post one of your members makes, only they can see it and only you can see it. So it's, it's pretty, I won't say secure, but I mean, it's private, right? So only you and they can see it. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit publish and create space. If you didn't know, you can come up here and next to it where it has this little link icon. You can click on that. Maybe we'll go with like a circle help option. That looks good. So, okay, there's our member support. Now you can come in, you can rename your space. You can switch the content around. Uh, you can select your topic forums. Um, don't forget, if you didn't, you need to make your content private and then choose excerpt or full content, depending on what uh, you want people to see. So we'll make sure we make our discussions private and click save. Okay, we're ready to go into Sure Members now. So let's go into Sure Members and we need to make an access group. So we're going to click add new if we don't have one already. And we're going to call this one our tech membership. Don't even remember what I called the SureCart product, but we'll just re remember it's tech membership. And we need to add the content that we're protecting inside of our tech membership. And the reason we're protecting it is because let's just assume that someone's going to come into SureDash at some point who isn't a client. Maybe you have courses, maybe you have different support for different products and you only want them to get access to the support portal for website development, or maybe you've created this different. Maybe this is like a portal for uh, onboarding, whatever it might be, you're going to want to give access to different sections and you're going to want to determine that based on what, you know, obviously what section it is. So if someone doesn't have access to the member support, we want to block them from getting into it. So for this particular product, we're gonna grant access to one space and that's going to be our member support section. And so we're gonna scroll down until we find specific pages, posts, and taxonomies. 
and we're going to look for a specific, I don't think it's a page or a post or a taxonomy, but we called it our member support is what I believe we called it. Oh, it flashed up there. There it is. Member support. And we're not going to worry about anything else inside of this, but we do need to make one change. And that is we do need to choose an action for unauthorized access. I do wish they'd get rid of this because as I've shown in past tutorials, it's not actually necessary in many cases. Um, but for us, we'll just go ahead and show a message and we'll show it in content and we'll just have the message say, um, you know, this is only allowed for members only. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is just said you're accessing a members only area, you know, sign up for support. You can link them to your sales page and then enable a login button. It's a nice touch. If you wish, you can user role sync. I won't, I won't worry about that in this one, but in the past I've shown how you can user role sync for memberships and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to just leave it like it is and click save access group. All right, now that we have our access group created, we technically could have done this step first because we do need to go back into Surecart and we do need to go back to our product and we do need to make an association or an integration between our uh, membership, or in this case, we called it our special product A, which I'm gonna go back and change that now. We'll just call it tech membership or something like that. Um, and then we're gonna edit this and give access. So we'll just call this our tech membership and website package or something like that seems to match what we've been setting up. And then we are going to come down now that we have it, we're gonna add an integration. Um, you can hit okay if that pops up on your screen. And our integration is going to be with Sure Members. And our access group is going to be that tech membership that we just set up. So just to recap, we're charging $500 a year for that tech membership. And we added a setup fee for the website build out or whatever it is in our example. Uh, for that, I think it was $1,500. So you can fulfill that offsite. And then for the membership, that's what we're given access to inside of SureDash. Okay, so we saved our product. And now it's time to talk about how to do invoicing. The first step is to add your customer if they don't already exist inside of SureCart. So we'll go to SureCart customers. Let's go ahead and add a new one here. We'll go ahead and call our customer Acme Widget Co. We'll go ahead and put this customer into test mode just so that it makes it easier for us to run through this process and verify that it all works together. And we'll click create. But if you're doing this live, you would not turn test mode on unless you were also testing. Okay, terrific. Now this is our individual customer's profile. You can see down here in the bottom right, it did automatically create a WordPress user for our customer. There's nothing to worry about. It did not send them an email or anything yet, um, but this is where we'll come into access to view everything once they've filled it out. So now that we have our customer made, we need to go to Surecart orders so that we can put together our invoice. We're going to click add new next to order. And now it's, I don't know if you notice that, but on the left hand side, we were under orders and there's these like hidden drop downs here that only appear once you're in the order section, but we are looking for orders and invoices. So because we are manually creating an order, we are technically creating an invoice. So we're going to add a product and that's going to be our product that we created called our tech membership and website package. So we've gone ahead and added that product. Now it has the 499 annual plus the $1,500 setup fee. And we'll do the issue date as of today with the due date. You'll see that in just a second here. Let's select our customer. Our customer is going to be uh, Doug plus Acme, I think is what I did in my email there. And I just remembered that because we put that customer into test mode, they're not going to appear here in live. So let's just add a new one. Why not? You'll get to see the process. So we'll just put the first name, last name, and email, put in some customer information and click create. I can fill in any other information that I want to about the customer, like their address and any of that information that I want to, or they can fill it in eventually when they go to checkout and it'll get added to their profile. Uh, and you can see here that there is a payment to be applied. It is that $19.99. Uh, if you want, you can add a coupon and it will reflect it on the invoice. Uh, but for this section down here, this is where you basically decide when it's due. You can choose if you want to auto charge your customer uh, for this invoice that you're creating, but we're going to send it to them so I can show you what that looks like. Uh, we'll set a due date. We'll just set it for tomorrow. And then for the memo and the footer, uh, we'll just add a little bit of content here. So I've added my memo and my footer, and then we'll go ahead and click create invoice. Once we do, we're going to get this little pop-up here that says this will lock the invoice and prepare it for payment. And you can toggle this on, this little toggle box here to send the email to the customer, which I, I recommend you do. All right, here's a look at what that looks like when the customer gets it. They're gonna say your invoice is ready for payment. It's going to give them a link to download the invoice. And if I click on that, it opens up like this. It includes all the information that we added, including the memo and the footer as well as a breakdown that this is a $4.99 price for the membership. 
and $4.99 per year, and that it includes the setup fee that we wrote on our line item there. You could have put more info if you wanted to for the $1,500 for that $19.99 due today. Your customer can download the PDF and print it. It's a pretty good setup. And here, when they go ahead and click on pay their invoice, they're going to be taken directly to the checkout form that you've associated with your website. You're looking for a page that says store checkout next to it. If we edit this page, it'll bring up uh, basically your block editor, traditional website editing experience. You can build this page however you want. This one has been around forever on my demo site, so it's got some like errors I can resolve, but it still totally works, uh, which you'll see in a second when I click on pay invoice. But you can design this to look like whatever you want. You can use, for example, some of the templates that I've built and put together. I've made these templates available to members of Convology Plus. So if you are a member of Convology Plus, it's in the resource library, uh, as well as my Surecart course. You can get access to these templates there. I have several of them available to you um, using Spectra and a couple using Thrive and different things like that. So you can access one of these nice looking ones if you want, or just make something super simple like I have here. And then when your customer comes in and clicks on pay invoice, what it's going to do is it's going to open that invoice up uh, and it's going to let them check out. And I am logged in. I didn't do this in an incognito window. If I did, I obviously would not have been logged in. It would have just said, you know, the name on the invoice. It would have let me put in all the details um, available to me. And then I can fill in that shipping info or billing info as it is. And whatever form fields that I have on my checkout form are going to be here. So this is customizable however you want. But what I really like about this is that again, it makes the invoice number available on checkout. And in my design, that's in this gray sidebar. It has the due date, the receipt slash invoice if they want to download it. And then again, those nice details where everything is memoed and clearly outlined for your customer to walk through and then complete their purchase. Now, inside of our Surecart order section, if we come back into invoices, you can see we do have uh, the ability to track all of our invoices, their status. Uh, we can view the payment page for this invoice. If I click on that from here, it's going to open up what we were just looking at, um, which is nice. We can also, when we hover over it, we can click on edit, which is going to bring back up, open our invoice. Over here on the right hand side, you have the option to view slash copy the payment page. I like this because you can copy the URL. You can send that directly to your client if you wanted to. Let's say that you didn't want to send them a default email. If you remember when we toggled on send customer email, we could skip that step, come here, download their invoice, copy their URL and then create like a custom email that we want to send to them. That's totally up to you. You can also do some other things. Let's say that you created this invoice, but you were at a trade show or something and you wanted to mark this as paid. So maybe they just cut you a check on the spot or they sent you an ACH payment, however they wanted to do it. I can come in here and I can mark this invoice as paid and then click mark paid. And I can manage the terms of this invoice outside of Surecart if I want to. That option's available to us. Now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to impersonate this user just to see what it looks like on their end. I'm gonna use the user switching plugin. Uh, it's just one that I found in the WordPress plugin repository. It's called user switching. It's worked pretty well for me on my testing site. So I'm just gonna to switch to this user real quick. So now when the customer comes into their profile and they want to check out all of their invoices and their order history, they can see it here. Uh, for the order history, they can see their membership plan that they're on. And again, because I manually marked this as paid, just be aware that they're active until I manually mark it as not paid. So your customer can come in here, they can add a payment method. Maybe they just paid you for the first year. They can add a payment method, they can cancel their plan, whatever they want to do. Um, but all of this is really nicely monitored and managed right from inside of their, their platform. And once they log in for the first time, they're also going to be able to set a password. It's one of those one-time password magic logins. If they don't set a password, they're just going to need to uh, enter their email and get a code to log in each time. Now in a previous video and tutorial that I have on my website, I showed how you can make this back to home button here as well as this logo take you directly to the SureDash portal. Check out those tutorials if you haven't, you'll find them inside my SureDash playlist. They're super helpful. Now coming back into our SureDash homepage, before we go and take a look at what this looks like from our user's perspective, I wanted to show you that you do have the option here or you can see that this member support section is locked. And if I click on the little padlock there, and while that's loading, if I hover over the padlock, you can see it says edit access group tech membership. When I clicked on it, it just opened up a new tab that contained the whole section for editing that contained the access group edit screen for this exact membership. So that's a nice touch, makes it really easy to manage and see what is controlled by which access groups inside of Sure Members.
All right, now I've opened up an incognito window and I've accessed my portal like one of my customers would. Um, you know, they might have access to any of these sections here, but we're gonna test out our member support portal here by clicking on it. And you can see it shows us our error message that we configured inside the access group. You're trying to access a members only area. Um, we are a member, so we'll click log in and we'll enter in our credentials. And now that we're logged into the member support portal here, we can submit a message that's private between us and whoever is a portal manager. So we can create a new topic. And by the way, this uh, interface and this whole setup here, I suspect much of this is going to change once we come out of the alpha phase. Uh, the SureDash team has been showing different uh, appearances and polish to the platform. Uh, if something is radically different, I'll create an updated video. Um, but for now, the gist of it is they're going to be able to come in, make a question like, how do I access my site? They can add a video. They can do all that kind of stuff. I went over all this in my overview of SureDash. They can click submit and they can submit a topic to the uh, portal managers or you or your support team. And you'll be able to come in here and you'll be able to see uh, the messages from, in this case, Acme Widgets. You'll be able to come in here as a as administrator and you'll be able to leave a comment and they'll be able to see their own posts, access those comments as well. So it's kind of like a way to get asynchronous coaching, asynchronous support within a portal that's uniquely exclusive to them. And that's just one example. You could do something totally different. This could be like member support videos. This could be um, a course. This could be anything you want it to be uh, inside of SureDash because it all works exactly the same. It gives them access to a section in SureDash that you've created to be whatever you want. All right, so we covered a lot of things. We covered the basics of SureCart and Sure members giving access to a space inside SureDash. We talked about SureCart invoicing, how to manage that client experience. I showed you what your clients see in their dashboard, how they could see their invoices. And we could, in fact, add another section here that's called invoices. If you didn't want to, in the bottom left-hand section, um, create a section called My Account, which I actually showed in another video, and you'll find that in my SureDash uh, playlist. But if you didn't want them to have to come in and click on invoices in order to find your, their invoices, you could obviously create a link section or a link space inside of your SureDash setup. Uh, that would let them come in and see their invoices so that you could create just a truly like if you all you did was bill clients with invoices and give them access to spaces in SureDash, you could absolutely uh, just create like a here's your invoice section here's what you got access your videos maybe support videos something like that and it would work just fine all right that's it for this specific tutorial on this use case inside of SureDash. i thought it was a pretty cool one it's something that I'm setting up for my own business. I think it's a great way to uh, give people access to templates if they purchase them or whatever it might be. If you'd like to learn more about SureDash, I have a whole playlist that I'll link down below and you're probably seeing it on the screen right now. And you can always leave a comment or check out Convology Plus to get more support from me.